Welcome to Wei Dei Han Suop, Great Minds. I'm Jared Diamond, Professor of Geography at the University of California in Los Angeles. Today, let's talk about another big question of geography, the differences between the East and the West. One often hears generalizations about claimed cultural differences between the Eastern world and the Western world. It's often said that the West values individualism, while the East values conformity to the social norms of the community. That generalization is often made about the comparison between the U.S. as an example of the West and China, Japan, and Korea as examples of the East. But Australia and Israel are as individualistic as the U.S. Western Europe is nearly as individualistic. Whereas similarly, India and Southeast Asia and the Philippines and Indonesia are in many respects as conformist and collectivist as are China, Japan, and Korea. Well, what is it that caused this big basic cultural difference in so many spheres between the East and West to develop? Recently, sociologists have recognized a reason that I think will surprise you. The reason is the long history of the difference between rice agriculture in East Asia and wheat agriculture in Europe and the U.S. Wheat has been the staple crop in Europe, West Asia, and North Africa for up to 11,000 years. On the other hand, rice has been the staple crop for up to 8,000 years in South China, from which rice spread to India, Southeast Asia, and Japan, and Korea. But irrigated rice agriculture and wheat agriculture have very different cultural requirements. Wheat farmers can get the water for growing wheat just from rainfall. They don't need irrigation. Hence, individual wheat farmers can grow wheat alone by themselves. They can plow their field alone. They can sow the wheat alone. They can reap the wheat. They can harvest the wheat alone. They need little or no help from neighbors. They can decide themselves when to plow and when to sow and when to harvest. That's individualistic agriculture of wheat farmers. But rice farming, to be productive, needs irrigation. Rice irrigation systems are not a one-man operation. A whole village has to cooperate to build and maintain a rice irrigation system. Everybody has to agree in the village when to flood the rice fields and when to plant the rice seeds and when to transplant the rice seedlings and when to harvest the rice. Rice farmers have to work together constantly. They have to cooperate with their neighbors and they have to be accepted by their neighbors. A non-cooperating individualistic rice farmer gets ostracized and starves to death. Once the choice of rice versus wheat as the main crop compels a society to be cooperative or individualistic in agriculture, that individualistic or cooperative behavior then extends to other areas of life. Of course, you're already thinking of objections to this theory. One objection is, you may say, today the great majority of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean people and the great majority of Americans and Europeans are not no longer rice farmers or wheat farmers. Instead, they live in cities and have jobs. Their ancestors stopped farming rice or wheat centuries ago. Could farming practices of centuries ago shape a culture today? Yes, they can. Traditionally, farming used to be the universal way of making a living both in the East and the West. Nearly 100% of people used to be farmers. Today, farming is so productive that only 2% of the American or Japanese population are farmers. But those 2% produce enough food to feed the other 98% who have non-farming jobs. But those agricultural practices formed society's habits and taught people to be individualistic or cooperative. Those habits of society have continued until today. 
even when the vast majority of people are no longer farmers and have forgotten the original reason for being either individualistic or cooperative. Well, you may have still another objection. You may say, aren't there other factors besides the crops grown by our ancestors that cause societies either to be more individualistic or more cooperative? Yes, you're right. There are other factors. For example, high population densities, as in Japan, favor people being cooperative. You've got to cooperate if there are lots of people close to you. Whereas low population densities, as in the U.S., Midwest, and West, permit and favor individualism. You can behave individualistically if your nearest neighbor lives a mile away. Frequent natural disasters like typh typhoons and earthquakes compel people to be cooperative, as in Japan. Infrequent natural disasters don't compel people to be cooperative. Scarce natural resources place value on cooperation, whereas abundant natural resources, as in the U.S., don't require cooperation. In summary, the difference between individualistic behavior and cooperative behavior is a basic difference between the East and the West. There are several likely contributing factors, but one surprising factor, only recently appreciated, is the long-lasting consequences of the different requirements of irrigated rice agriculture and rainfall-dependent wheat agriculture in history of the East and West. Those consequences still distinguish Eastern and Western societies today, even in countries where the vast majority of people are no longer farmers. So there's an example of how the geography of rice versus wheat farming has molded the differences between individualistic and cooperative behavior in the East and the West.